Okay guys, so I've gone ahead and installed my printer software for my Lulzbot machine. Now this is the configuration wizard that you're greeted with when you start your slicer software for the first time. And what we're doing here is essentially loading up a basic printer profile. Now the great thing about Lulzbot's edition of Cura is they've got all their profiles set. If you were using the other version of Cura, you would find a bunch more, which we would find in the other printers section here. So we're gonna use the Lulzbot Mini today, which is this desktop desktop printer I've got sitting beside me. And so I'm gonna go ahead and select that in this menu and then go ahead and select the standard Lulzbot Mini. We're not using the Flexi Studio, so that's awesome. Okay, so this is the uh, window that we're loaded up into. Now this is Cura's basic view. So on the left here, we've got this gray box and that just has all of our settings for the quick print view, which is the model viewer that we're in right now. Over here, we've got our print bed visualization. So that's just a virtualization of our print bed. So that's what the, uh, the Cartesian system sort of looks like in 3D on your computer. We've got a couple of other options around here. We can jump into our toolbar as well, which has, you know, as you would expect, all the other settings that you might ever need. We're gonna go into preferences first off and we're just gonna set a price. So we'll say $37 per kilogram of filament. Our model color's there. We've got languages which auto detect, which is great. You can auto detect an SD card drive. That's something we haven't really talked about. Now with your printer, you can either do it via a USB tether, which is what we're gonna be doing with the mini, or some printers have an SD card slot. So as long as it's formatted as a FAT32 SD card, you'll be fine to just plug that in and Cura will automatically want to save your G-code file to the SD card, which makes it very quick and easy to grab it out and print from it. Also, make sure it's checking for updates because you always want to be running the latest version of Cura. Okay, so some basic things about the model viewer. Holding right click, we can rotate our view around. If we scroll in and out with the mouse wheel, that will zoom us in and out, the same as holding both mouse buttons and moving the mouse up and down. Left mouse does nothing yet. What we need to do is go ahead and load a model file. So like we spoke about before, to load a model file, we can go to the load model button. We're gonna be loading STL models because we're in our slicer software now. So I'm gonna load the Roctopus print, which is your first print that you'll ever do with a Lulzbot 3D printer. So this is the Roctopus here. The idea is Lulzbot have printed one of these at the factory on your printer. And when you receive it, you'll print one yourself just to make sure everything is in order. So you load it in and you can see that the slicer is taking its time to slice it through and we've instantly got some information about our print. So with the current settings, which is the settings over in this gray box, like we spoke about, we can see it's gonna take 37 minutes to print this model. It's gonna take 0.85 of a meter of filament, which is equal to about seven grams. And this bottom number represents the price. So that's about 25 cents worth of filament, if it was $37 per kilogram. Now that we've got our model on the bed, we get another whole setting bunch of settings that we can take a look at. Basic ones are left clicking the model and we can drag it around the bed. Now, if you wanna print three or four of a, an object, this can be really helpful. Just moving it around the bed is really good. <clears throat> so right click rotates, left click can drag a model around. Also get a few settings down here, which we'll go over in just a second. Now let's take a bit of a closer look at this section. So this is our material ease of use. We can drop straight down to all if we like and see every filament in here, now this is our filament name, and what Lulzbot does is creates filament profiles for those filaments, which means you can just select, without having to go into any of the advanced settings, you can select one of three options, for example, for this PLA from Polylight. So I can select a standard print, which is gonna take 37 minutes, a high speed print, which is gonna take, we'll just bear with Cura for a second, it's just re-slicing that model. That's gonna take 26 minutes. Or we can go for a high detail print, which as you can imagine, it's always a trade off between speed and quality. So high detail will probably be longer than that 37 minute standard print. There we go. So that one will take an hour and three minutes. Now we're gonna go into the settings behind those three quick print profiles in a second. But for our first print, all we need to do is remain on a standard print. Now we get two more options here. Now we can print support structures and we can print brims. Now what are brims and what are support structures? Well, brims are essentially extra layers of material, extra extrusions of material that go around the base of your model. Now to show you what that is best, what I'm gonna do is just go into the view mode 
and select layers. So this gives us a 2D layer view of our model. There's also a bunch of other ones in here that can be really helpful, especially if we're printing a more complicated model. The Roctopus print is quite an easy print. So we can see here, this is a 2D slice. This might bring it all together for you. If you've been hearing me talk about 2D slices, this is probably the best way for you to visualize it. We'll go to our bottom layer. Now this is, this is called a skirt. So what that does is, prior to the print, this is the tool head path here on that blue line. It's gonna come in from the home position, which is over in this corner here. It's gonna drop down and it's gonna print a skirt. Now this helps just purge out the filament and get it giving a nice consistent extrusion prior to the start of your print. It can be really handy to have. Now, alternatively to skirts, we can print brims. So if I select this, it's going to remove the skirt and add brims in. And brims are essentially additional layers that meet the base of your print. So you can imagine that would be an entirely blue section. Let's have a look at what that looks like. And there we go. So now we can see that that bottom layer is actually quite thicker. Now this can really help with your printer not losing the print halfway through because it's not gonna allow the parts of the print. So that's the red line. The red line refers to the very outside shell of your print. That red line is obviously the part that's at most danger to peel up from the bed if you're using a filament that does warp. So adding a brim in can actually help a great deal in reducing those warping problems. So we're gonna turn brims off. We don't really need them for the, the Roctopus today. And support structures on the other hand, we've actually got a different view model view for that. So I'm going to go into the overhangs view. So overhangs, now it looks kind of similar to the one we were just in, but if we just look down and underneath, obviously under here is gonna be a complete overhang because that is unsupported, but it's against the print bed, so that's fine. Now, if we look really closely, we can see some little parts here. So those red dots here, here, underneath the eyeball and underneath the eyelid there. They are all what we call overhangs. So they're parts that aren't necessarily supported by any other material in the printer. And what we can do in certain circumstances is elect to print support structures. And they are additional layers of plastic that will be printed from the bed up to that point, And they will just support that print that isn't really supported by anything else. We don't really need it for the Rockopus today. And we'll have a look at what the effect is of printing tiny little parts like that without supports toward the end of this chapter. So that pretty much covers the basics of Cura. What we're gonna do now is take a look at model manipulation within Cura.